Today we're going to be doing an introduction to the theorem of Pythagoras or the Pythagorean theorem. First we're going to quickly take a look at who Pythagoras was. Pythagoras was a mathematician and philosopher who was born over 2,500 years ago in ancient Greece and he was known for a number of different beliefs that he had and things that he studied but what he's most famous for is for proving a theorem about the lengths of the sides in a right angle triangle and this is a theorem that is still used today and that we are going to be learning about and that we are going to be using and learning how to use. Okay, so first let's just take a look at right angle triangles. Okay, so you already know that a right angle triangle is a triangle that has one angle of 90 degrees. Okay, one right angle. What you may not know is what the sides in a right angle triangle are called. The most important side that we need to know the name of is the side that is opposite to the right angle and that is called the hypotenuse. Okay, so you've got your right angle, the angle or the side that is opposite that right angle is the hypotenuse and that will always be the longest side in your triangle. What you need to understand about a triangle is that the side opposite the angle will be based, the length of the side will be based on the angle that's opposite. If it is opposite the biggest angle in the triangle, it will be the longest side. If it is oppos opposite the smallest angle in the triangle, it will be the smallest side. In a right angle triangle, the 90 degree angle will always be the biggest angle. You cannot possibly have a bigger angle than 90 degrees in a right angle triangle. So because it's opposite the biggest angle, the hypotenuse will always be the longest side. No matter what the other two sides are, the hypotenuse will always be longer than them. Okay, so that is your hypotenuse. Then these other two sides are called right angle sides, or you can, they can be called the altitude, height, or perpendicular, and the base, but I'm just going to re refer to them as the right angle sides or the other two sides in the triangle. Okay, so you've got the hypotenuse, and you've got the right angle sides, or the other two sides in the triangle, which are adjacent to the 90 degree angle, where the hypotenuse is opposite the 90 degree angle. Okay, so now let's investigate right angle triangles. We are going to draw a triangle, triangle ABC, with angle A, 90 degrees, AB, 4 centimeters, and AC, 3 centimeters. So let's just quickly have a look at that. So if you've got the worksheet that goes with this lesson, then you should have this already that you can use as a starting point. If you don't have it, it's fine. You can just draw it for yourself. You can just use a protractor to make sure you get a 90 degree angle over there. Okay. Then what we're going to do, so this is already our 90 degree angle at A. Then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to mark AB on this on one of the two lines. It doesn't matter which line. Okay, you can do the horizontal or the vertical line for AB. And this is going to be for AB is 4 centimeters over there. So that's going to be the point B. And then over here, we're going to have for AC 3 centimeters. So that's going to be over there the point C. And then once you've got your B and C marked, you can then just go and join them up. Like that. Okay, so now I've got my right angle triangle, triangle ABC. Once you've done that, I want you to take each of the sides of that triangle and I want you to draw a square on each side similar to this over here. Okay, so if you look at this diagram over here, you can see, so if this is a three centimeter side, then I've got a square which is divided up into centimeter square blocks or square centimeter blocks. So this is a three centimeter side. You'll do the same thing on the four centimeter side. You'll have a tri or a square underneath the triangle and you'll have a square that is diagonal over here on the hypotenuse side as well. So I want you to do that. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on that quickly and then we're going to have a look at that.
Okay, so let's take a look at what you should have. So first of all, you should have found, depending on where or how you drew your triangle, if you had the four centimeter side at the bottom and the three centimeter side on the side, then you should have two squares looking like this on your AC and AB sides. Or if your four centimeter side was on the side over here and your three centimeter side was on the bottom, then it should have looked something like this. So that's what you should have had for your horizontal and vertical sides. You should have a square with nine blocks, either on the side or on the bottom, and a square with 16 blocks on the bottom or on the side. Okay, then you should have found if you measured the line BC that this is five centimeters long. And so when you draw the square on that side, it should look like this, where you end up with a block or a square with 25 square centimeter blocks. Okay, so that's what you should have got when you did the squares on all the sides of your triangle. Now let's have a look at filling in this table based on what we've got over there. Okay, so over here, first of all, I've got a table where you've got the sides in your triangle are AB, AC, and BC, which is the hypotenuse. The length of the side AB was four centimeters. The length of the side AC was three centimeters. Those we already knew because that's what those are the side, the length that you were told to draw this, the triangle with. Then, as I said already, you should have found that BC was five centimeters. So what I want you to do now is I want you to fill in the missing values in the table. So the length of BC, and then also I want you to fill in the square on each side of the triangles. In other words, AB squared is the number of square centimeter blocks. So you're going to go and count the number of blocks on the side AB. You're going to count the number of blocks on the side AC. You're going to count the number of blocks on the side BC. But it's actually just the same as squaring AB, squaring AC, and squaring BC. So we need to give you a uh, 30 seconds to fill that in quickly. Okay, so let's see what you should have in your table. So your table should look something like this. You should have five over here for the length of BC, which is the hypotenuse. Then you should have found that the number of square centimeter blocks on the side of AB was 16 because four squared is 16. The number of square centimeter blocks on AC was nine because three squared is nine. And the number of square centimeter blocks on the side of the hypotenuse BC is 25 because five squared is 25. Okay, so now I want us to take that and have a look at what happens now. If I look at these over here, BC squared, we already know, is 25. Okay, now if we take the AB squared and the AC squared, so the squares on AB and AC, then the other two sides, not the hypotenuse, where BC is the hypotenuse, and these are the other two sides, the right angle sides. They were 16 and 9. If, what happens if I add those together? 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay, now over here, this is the square on the hypotenuse, and this is the sum of the squares on the other two sides. Sum meaning that they've been added together. Okay, so if you look over here, BC squared is 25, and AB squared plus AC squared is also 25. So what this is showing us is that the square on the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle will be the same as the sum of the squares on the other two sides. Now this will happen no matter what right angle triangle you test this with. It will always happen, okay? And this is the theorem that Pythagoras proved, is that when you take the sum, or when you take the square on the hypotenuse, it will be equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides of the right angle triangle. So this brings us to our Pythagorean theorem, which is over here. In a right angle triangle, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides of that triangle. Okay, so let's have a look at what it looks like in diagram form and as a formula. So over here, I've got my right angle triangle, ABC. Now, 
points are labeled with capital letters. Okay, that's normal. But when you're working in triangles, it's kind of common to label the side opposite an angle with a small letter version of the point for that angle. So if this is angle B, then we'll, we'll call this B, little b. If this is angle A, we'll call this little a. And if this is angle C, we'll call this little c. The side that is opposite the angle is named based on the angle that's opposite, okay, with little letters. Right, so that is why, why over here I have A and B and C, little a, little b, little c. That is talking about the lengths of the sides in the triangle. Okay, so A is the length of the hypotenuse because it is opposite the right angle, okay? So A squared, that is the square on the hypotenuse, is equal to B squared plus C squared. The two other sides squared and added together. And the reason that I can say that, remember, in, ge in geometry, we always have to give a reason for any statement that we make. So the reason I can, I can say that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABC, which has angle A equals 90 degrees. Because remember, the Pythagorean theorem only applies to right angle triangles. So I have to have a right angle in order to be able to use it. So I'm saying that angle A is 90 degrees to say that this triangle is, in fact, a right angle triangle. Okay. Now, so now you know what the Pythagorean theorem is. Now we're going to start learning how to apply it. But before we start learning how to use it to work out the lengths of sides, let's first just take a look at using it to figure out whether or not triangles are in fact right angle triangles. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is determining if a triangle is a right angle triangle or not. In the first example we're going to do, we need to prove that triangle PQR is a right angle triangle and we need to determine which angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so in this triangle over here, you've got angle P over here, you've got angle Q over here, and you've got angle R over here. We need to figure out, or we need to prove that this is a right angle triangle, and we also need to figure out which angle would be 90 degrees. So first, remember we said that the hypotenuse is always going to be opposite the right angle, and it will always be the longest side in our triangle. So if we look at the sides in this triangle, the one that is the longest is this 13 centimeter side over here. Because it is the longest, it means that the angle that it is opposite would be the right angle if this is a right angle triangle. So this would be our hypotenuse if this is a right angle triangle. So the first thing we need to do in order to prove that this is a right angle triangle is we need to identify which side in this triangle would actually be the hypotenuse. Okay, so PQ is the longest side, which means that it would be the right angle, or it would be the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle, if this is a right angle triangle. Okay, so the first thing we do is we identify the longest side so that we know which side would be the, the hypotenuse. Once we do that, we need to now go and use the lengths of the sides and determine whether or not Pythagoras' theorem is valid for this triangle. And if it is, that means that this is, in fact, a right angle triangle. So what I'm going to do is I need to work out the square of PQ, which is the longest side. So that's going to be 13 squared. Okay, so 13 squared is 169. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to go and find the squares on the other two sides of the triangle and add them up. Because remember, Pythagoras' theorem says that the square on the hypotenuse, which is this over here, that's 169, will be equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So let's find out what the sum on the, of the squares on the other two sides is. Okay, so PR is 12, so that's going to be PR squared plus RQ squared. So that's going to be 12 squared plus RQ is 5 squared. Okay, so that's 144 plus 25. Now, if I take 144 and I add 25, I get 169. Now, because these two gave me the same result, they both are equal to 169, that means that PQ squared is equal to PR squared plus RQ squared. Now, because they are equal to each other, that means that this must be a right angle triangle because 
Pythagoras' theorem is valid for this triangle. Okay, so therefore I can say that triangle PQR is a right angle triangle. They also asked me to determine which angle is 90 degrees. Now we said that because PQ is the longest side in the triangle, it would then be the hypotenuse if this proved to be a right angle triangle. So it is the hypotenuse, which means that it is opposite the 90 degree angle. The angle that is that PQ is opposite is angle R, which means that R must be the 90 degree angle. Okay, so that's what you should get for that example. So in order to prove that a triangle is a right angle triangle, we use Pythagoras' theorem and we, we try and find out if it is valid for the triangle that we're looking at. So we take the triangle, we find the longest side because we need to know which side would be the hypotenuse if it is a right angle triangle, and we square it and we find out what that's equal to. Then we take the other two sides that wouldn't be the hypotenuse and we square them and add them together and we see if we get the same result as when we squared the hypotenuse or the longest side. And if it is the same, it means that it must be a right angle triangle because then Pythagoras' theorem is working for that triangle. If Pythagoras' theorem doesn't work for that triangle, it must mean that it's not a right angle triangle because remember, Pythagoras' theorem only works for right angle triangles, which means that if it does work, then it is a right angle triangle, and then you can identify which angle is 90 degrees. It must be the angle that is opposite that longest side, because that longest side is then the hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay, so now you're going to do a couple for yourself, where you're going to prove whether or not triangles are right angle triangles, and you also need to identify, if it is a right angle triangle, which angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so over here, you have got question A, triangle ABC, where AB is 4 centimeters, BC is 6 centimeters, and AC is 5 centimeters. And you need to first determine whether or not this is a right angle triangle. And if it is, you need to identify which angle is 90 degrees. I'm going to give you two minutes to work on that. Okay, so let's go through that. So first of all, in question A, you had to identify which side in this triangle is the longest side. So you've got AB is 4 centimeters, BC is 6 centimeters, and AC is 5 centimeters. The longest side there is BC. So BC is the longest side. This means that BC would be the hypotenuse 
if this does prove to be a right angle triangle, which means that I need to square BC and see if it is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared. So BC is 6, so BC squared will be 36. Okay. Now I need to take the other two sides and I need to square them and add them together and see if I get the same result. So that's going to be AB squared plus AC squared. So that is 4 squared plus 5 squared. That's 16 plus 25. 16 plus 25 is 41. Now this is not equal to that. So now I can say therefore BC squared is not equal to AB squared plus AC squared. So now because it's not equal, that means that Pythagoras' theorem is not going to work for this triangle. And because it doesn't work, it means that this is not a right angle triangle. Therefore, triangle ABC is not a right angle triangle. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that example. Question B, you're going to do the same thing. You also need to take the triangle, in this case it's triangle DEF, and you need to determine whether or not this is a right angle triangle, and you need to, if it is a right angle triangle, identify which angle is 90 degrees. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, in triangle DEF, the longest side is DF at 10 meters. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take DF and I'm going to square it. And that gives me 10 squared, which is 100. Okay, so now I know that the square on the longest side is 100. Now let's take a look at the other two sides and see what we get when we square them and add them together. So that's going to be DE squared plus EF squared. So that is 6 squared plus 8 squared, which gives us 36 plus 64. Now if you add 36 and 64, that gives you 100, which is the same as what we got when we squared the longest side. That means that I can say that df squared is equal to de squared plus ef squared. Now because those are equal to each other, I can say therefore Pythagoras' theorem is working for this triangle, which means that triangle def is a right angle triangle. With, now we have to identify which angle is 90 degrees. 
in this one, the angle that is opposite the right or the longest side, the longest side is DF, so that means that DF must be the hypotenuse in this triangle. So the angle opposite DF is angle E. So that means that angle E is equal to 90 degrees. That is what you should have got for that question. And that is the Pythagorean theorem and how we use it to determine whether or not a triangle is right angled. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.